Uh, Kipera Villages um, episodes. Village seven. <laughs> Interesting story of a tree. This is the heart of the story, ladies and gentlemen, and this is what I was telling you. So, uh, the, this is the granddaughter of Mtsewe Lesembe, and uh, this guy was an army. And so, this is where he settled and he built his former. Hola, ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to another episode of Victors with Victor. We'll be doing the Kibera Villages um, episodes. And so today we are doing village seven, <laughs> village seven in Kibera, and this village is the smallest village in Kibera. It's called Kambi Muru. Remember yesterday <clears throat> we did uh, Mashimoni, which is a Swahili word for a hole or a ditch. And so today we are doing Kambi Muru. So what's going to be interesting is that we are incorporating a very interesting story of a tree in a village. I don't want to spoil the soup, but let's go. Join us and let's experience this. I hope you guys are enjoying. If you're new here, please remember to subscribe. If you're a continued supporter, we really appreciate and celebrate you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, um, Seventh village in Kibera, and that's Kambi Moon. So, as I'd mentioned, uh, Kambi is Kamp Muru. I'm not really clear what Muru means, uh, but this is one of the this is actually the smallest village in Kibera. Um, rarely do you find people around during the day, which is quite interesting, uh, but also. Uh, this village is a mixture of different tribes. So Kibera has a lot of uh, tribes, different tribes. And the diversity in it is what's really amazing. Um, like I said, it's also a communal uh, place. Let's go this direction. And so we are... Uh, uh, I'm really curious to understand the meaning of Muru. Kambi, I know, is Kamp. Yeah, but... Uh, Interestingly, with its uh, small size, uh, Kambi Muru is really diverse. This is one of the places that, uh, of all the villages that we've done, it's the first place you'll find Nubians. Nubians were the first settlers in Kibera. So when uh, Kibera initially, like I said, it's actually, a, we should go this direction. Yeah, so it's actually, it's actually a Nubian word for forest. Uh, I think I had mentioned when we were starting um, doing, we were start, we're beginning to do the stories in Kibera. Let me drop this. So like I said, uh, this um, area was first inhabited by the Nubians. And um, so this is the first village that you'll find, uh, Nubian villages. So, um, it was first inhabited by the Nubians, it used to be a forest. And so the Nubians were able to inhabit it and start building structures. And I imagine then that is what led to uh, this uh, mud houses or mud structures, you can see. Yeah. Um, Kambi Muru is interesting because uh, the word camp actually could be this is the first place that the Nubian settled. I'm not really sure because for it to be called a camp, they camped here. So the soldiers, uh, there's a tree that I'm gonna show you guys that has a history here in Kambi Muru, and uh, this tree is said to be one of the places that the soldiers used to chill and that is, that's why it's probably called a camp so there's a very historic it's a very old tree i got a glimpse of its its tree and it said that the 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 the, the, the tree used to be a shed for soldiers during the world war world war two or one world war one yeah yeah so it's a very old tree i tried to find out its name and I couldn't find out its name, but it's very old. I was able to have a chat with uh, uh, the uh, great grandchildren of the old man who, who who planted that tree. 
and uh it was really amazing to hear that story from what i'm i don't know if you're watching and you know the story of kambi muru camp i know kambi i know is camp so this could be the place that uh the soldiers were camping at and uh, probably the nubians built their first camps when they came to settle in kibera so we're walking down the hall into kambi muru and another interesting thing about kambi muru is you can tell the ambience how calm it is and also here we have places that people plant avocados see bananas Very cool. yeah funny the reason why i was bringing you guys down is so you could realize we started walking from uh, we started walking from the beginning of Kambi Muru and now as we go down If you may turn around you will see Katwekera, which is the village we did a story with summer uh, You will see Katwekera. I told you guys about um, when Mayugno my and uh, um, Tim Rindima Nasto were here. We did a story in Katwekera. So that walk actually takes us to this walk actually gets us to the end of Kambi Muru, which is slightly down here where this camp ends and so there begins Katwekera village so that was about it i'm gonna take you guys to the tree the historical tree that is here in Kambi Muru. uh there is an old man i don't want to mention because i don't have the rights to be talking about there's an old man who has generation of his generations living uh in that village where in that do you call it like it's a small clan so the nubians here when they settle they settle in a boma something called a boma it's like a home and then the sons the daughters the grandchildren would grow in that home and it would be a continuation of generations this is what I know from seeing, so I will not claim to know completely the right things. As we do other villages that are inhabited by the Nubians, I hope we'll be able to get um, an old chap to take us through the story of the Nubians in Kibera. But one thing that I know is this is the first village that you'll find the Nubian homes. So guys, come and then I'll take you to the historical tree. grandchildren of the man who planted this tree same. <laughs> By the name so we are meeting the grandchild we are very excited hello, hello. thank you for having me uh can i sit here yeah. ah okay Asante sana. so ladies and gentlemen like i had mentioned this is a typical nubian home introduce yourself her name is Fatuma Weleseme. So Weleseme is the man himself. So he's the granddaughter of Weleseme. Weleseme is the, um, this is the home of Weleseme. When was this home built? In Boma, Ili, Ili, Anza, Lini. In Boma, Tuliipata. Ah, okay. Kama mimi ni meipata. In Boma ni ababuyangu. Mwenye amezama maungu. 
alikuwa anaitwa Walasena Abdul Faraj alikuwa kala sergeant by that time ukisema kala sergeant unamaanisha ye yeah, alikuwa a jeshi askari sijisi ah. alikuja alikuja kama askari nice askari wa mabriti this is the heart of the story ladies and gentlemen and this is what i was telling you so uh the this is the granddaughter of Msewe Lesembe mm. and uh this guy was an army mm. and so this is where he settled and he built his boma so where was it, where exactly was Wele Sembe from Wele Sembe had to come up Ah. <laughs> mafisi walikuwa wanakula walikuja walikuja kama wa wafugaji no eh. so this is the art of the story i'm going to cut a short so that i can translate the story <laughs> so the gra the grandfather came with the british soldiers it is said that they came through congo sudan mm -hmm. right and then they came and settled here he was the first of the settlers that came here so they cut the bushes this was a forest I'd, like i'd mentioned kibra is a nubian word right mm -hmm. for forest msitu is forest and that's mm -hmm. what she has just explained and so when they came here they cleared the forest and then they started living here mm -hmm. okay jenga he miali alipanda ah okay hii mti alipanda sasa hiyo ni kama miti yetu ya babu yetu ah okay pia sisi tunajivunia hiyo miti hii miti alipanda lakini walipanda babu yangu ni aluru mm yeye ni aluru na ndendo sasa hii miti ni amila ya kialuru ah eh hii ni miti ya kialuru kwa aluru wana, wana tunaita abila ah uh, okay so aluru aluru sasa ni nini exactly sisi wanubi uh. sisi ni wanubi uh, okay. Okay. lakini tuko na nini yetu ndani sub sub yeah. ah sub yeah. Oof, yeah. this is rich <laughs> interesting so um well the is aluru aluru is a sub clan of the nubian and lendu mm -hmm. so there are two of them yeah uh -huh kabila yake mm. ni aluru na lendu ah, okay. but aluru ndo iko juu okay yeah. so aluru is in hierarchy um aluru is on the highest hierarchy mm. of the lendu yeah mm. so mzee wele sebe was aluru mm. and so the the tree that i showed you guys the mugumo tree mugumo is apparently what's on google but there is a name there is a nubian name for the tree and the nubian name is sheder abila sheder abila sheder abila ah okay na hii miti iko na umuhimu gani hii miti ni alipanda kwa matambiko yao mm unaona matambiko yao ya alio sasa hii miti kwao iko na muhimu hiyo miti mm. hii miti iko na muhimu hata kwetu sasa hii miti tuna tunaipatia heshima mm. unaona kwa sababu hiyo miti hata vile iliwachwa hapa wakati wa huyu babu babu yangu amekufa kama sijamuona mm. mimi nimezaliwa sijamuona mm. kwa sababu alikufa 1957 niliona and niliona how old was it? alikuwa na miaka ngapi alikuwa mzee ah, okay. alikuwa ashakuwa mzee ali alikufa 57 mimi bado sijazaliwa mimi nimekuja kuzaliwa 64 kama nyanya yangu yuko mimi nimeona nyanya yangu ah, okay. lakini pia nyanya yangu akukaa sana by different ya nyanya yangu na babu yangu 
kwa sababu nyanyango ali ali alikufa 67 babu alikufa 57 akiwa akiwa old 90 hawa watu ni wa 19 wao ni wa 18 18 something okay 1814 yeah. 1815 ah, okay. sindo alikuja huko so i talked about birthdays in africa yeah, and anniversaries in africa so she was born and the grandfather mzee um mzee well, yeah. uh, was um, already dead and so she managed to see the grandmother and then the ma- grandmother passed on later on this uh, tree i got lost in the story because it's so rich but the tree is of importance to the aluru the culture of the aluru and so when they planted it there the great grandchildren and the grandchildren who she is among them have really honored this tree and you know what's funny is uh, there is a railway station here the tree is inside the boundary of the railway station but it's never been cut ebu tuambie kwa nini hii mti kwa asili ya waafrika wote wale wanaijua wanaogopa kuikata unaona hata hii mti kuna wakati Kenya Power ilikata hizo mabawa kwa sababu ya hiyo waya yao ilikaa hapa paka tukatupa hakuna mwafrika yule anataka kuichoma kwa sababu wanasema ikichoma siji ni kisirani ni nini haijachoma hata sisi wenyewe hatuoti hiyo moto hatu hatu kati hiyo hiyo kuni tuwashe ah, okay. na hiyo mti pia ukikata na madharau utapata shida unaona yani ukuja tu na madharau ukate kwa sababu watu we, mtu hawezi mwenye anaijua hawezi kata mm. kwa sababu akikata itaweza mzuru unaona ah eh yeah. okay. in a nutshell um what she's saying is Histor- historically in an uh, african tradition this is a very respected and honored tree uh for any african who knows the tree people are very scared and uh, they are afraid of cutting the tree even the branches there was one time that kenya power kenya power is one of the companies that supplies power electricity across the country there was one time they came and they cut the branches because of concern so the kenyan power came and cut some of the branches because it was um, interrupting their wires and nobody picked those branches people were afraid to pick their branches and even them they left it there until it dried so nobody would actually use it as firewood one of the things that people use for fire here is um the firewood uh, from the trees but nobody is actually using this and what she's telling me is that if you come and cut the tree um without like without honoring the tree there might be consequences that come with that so ladies and gentlemen you really understand the depth of this tree unafikiri hii miti iko na miaka ngapi approximately mama angu ameipata mwenye kumeza mm. na saizi mimi ni 60 plus mm. hiyo mti iko na nini iko na mwaka nyingi umeona ile kitu imefanya tuweke hiyo mchanga yeah. nini hizo mizizi yake ilikuwa nje ah eh, ilikuwa nje hivi imekaa kama rungurungu sasa tumeona tuiweke hiyo mchanga i support yani tu tuiweke tu ikae tu nzuri So when I was on the tree you could tell that I was up on the hill. And uh, you probably could ask yourself why is it like this? But what she's telling me first of all I'd ask how old would you approximate that the tree is? She is 60 years old plus. And uh, her mother found the tree was already planted. And the man who planted this tree <laughs> was the grandfather so you can imagine you can approximate how this tree is probably more than 100 years old yeah. as you can tell plus. yeah so what they did is uh 
the roots were coming out from the side so they were pouring soil to support the tree and to hide the roots imiti kwenu kama wajuku wa mzee wa leseme mnai angalia kivipi sumeona hapo ni safi tunafagia tena inasaidia watu shed it's a very cool yeah unajua hiyo shed hiyo hiyo roots zake ilikuwa iko kaa kiti lakini tumefia kwa sababu ya nini hiyo itaweza kai hivi nje itaweza kukosa kosa mwelekeo pengine miti itakosa nguvu ndio unaona tumeelekea mchanga lakini hiyo miti ni nzuri hata hata hii miti saa hizi mm. itakusaidia wewe mm. kwa sababu kuna mtu unataka kukutana naye mm. saidia huku chini mm. atakwambia uko wapi kwa darajani haya bafika kwa hiyo mti kubwa tukutane nitakuchukua watu wengi wanakuja wanasimama hapa wakingoja watu wao na wachukua hii miti inasaidia pia mtu atakuja amechoka amekaa tena baridi na mpiga mm. Hata hiyo miti tulikuwa tunataka kupanga saa zingine tutengeneze kitu kama ndoo hivi tuweke na mfereji tuweke hapo maji watu wakikuja tuweke vikombe mtu akikuja achukue maji ya kunywe aende nilikuwa niko na hiyo mpango lakini unajua sasa kuweka hapo maji sasa ni hela hizo hizo nini ya vikombe ndio nikipata nitaweka hapo ka glass ile niweke nioshe nikiweka hapo wa mtu akipita Hmm. This is interesting and beautiful and now we are interested in this tree. So what she's saying is uh, I'd ask the importance of this tree to them as the grandchildren and uh, the great grandchildren of Mzee Lesembe. And uh, what she's saying it's of great importance to them. So um the roots of the tree had actually started acting as seeds. So and then they decided to cover it. One of the things that I agree with her is if somebody is coming from this other side of Kibera and another one is coming from this other side of Kibera this is one place that is a meeting point so if I tell you that let's meet by the big tree that's by the railway station you already know that it's this tree it's the one and only tree in Kibera the biggest and the oldest tree in Kibera the second thing is that a lot of people in Kibera are uh, going to industrial area or even just walking through Kibera uh if you walk through Kibera and the sun is hot you as you pass under that tree it is going to be very difficult for you to pass without stopping you will stop there because it has a cool shade under it what she is saying that she is thought about um uh, she's thought of doing as a granddaughter of Mzewe Lesembe is maybe having a tap around there with cups because a lot of people stop there even when people are going to the hospital sometimes they shed there for a minute or two even uh, as we were waiting for her to come she had gone to the m m uh, mosque we were shedding there we were relaxing there as opposed to because the one of the gra great grandchildren was around and he would have welcomed us in but we chose to sit there because it's very cool to be under that tree sasa when power kenya power came and they wanted to cut the branches mm -hmm. what was the procedure Uh -uh. Unajua Kenya Power ile kitu watakata mm. kwa sababu wanaikata itaharibu. Ah okay. Sasa vile wata itaharibu sasa hata wakikata kwa sababu hawaikati ati wanaikata tu kimadharau. Ndio. Uh, Wanakata kwa sababu ya nini? Ya hiyo nini mti yao wa stima. Okay. Sasa wakikata kwa sababu ya miti ya stima hakuna kitu itawafanya. Uh, kwa sababu hawajakuja na ile madharau kuikata. Uh, hata watu wa reli walikuwa wametuambia mm. wakikuja kutengeneza ile ile nini hiyo mm. fence au sio njoo hizi reli mm. walikuwa wanatengeneza hiyo nyumba si hata umeona hapo kuna slab that's an important things um is that i was asking about is when Kenya Power was cutting some of the branches of the tree uh did they have a procedure so what she has explained is Kenya Power when they came it's the protocol and i think even for them it's safe for them because they get their power from there so it's actually safe that um the branches that were 
uh, were leaning on the electric wire uh, were cut because for safety of everybody and the community at large. And uh, she was telling me, because I was telling you guys, this is just about inside the boundaries of uh, the Kenya railway. So, mbona yu kimiti ya iku katuwa wakati vitu zilikuwa zinatolewa by Kenya railway? Sini mekuambia wa Afrika wana yogopa. Labda mzungu doa kuja wakati. Lakini mtu hile anaitua mwa Afrika, anaogopa hiyo miti. Kwa sababu hata watu wa Kenya pao walituambia, watafanya hivi kama fence hivi. Ah. Watakuja kufanya nini hivi, hivi, wapitishe hiyo mti baki. Okay. Ndiwa dituambia hivi. Watu wa rendi. Mm. Ah. Lakini sisi tuliko tumenyamaza wakitaka kukata wakate kwa sababu wa wenye ndo watajua. Hmm? The tree is not defended, just so you know. They respect and honor it. But uh, what she's telling me is um, because there was a time the Kenyan railway was clearing everything within the boundary of the Kenyan railways. And I was really curious to know why wasn't this tree cut? An African who understand what this tree stands for would not cut that tree, unless it's a foreigner who doesn't really understand. But even if you're a foreigner and you come with an African and they have the ax or the panga, they would not dare put an ax or panga or even a saw on that tree whatsoever. Kambi muru. Kambi muru ina maanisha muru. Kambi muru, kuna kabila wanaitwa muru. Muru, okay. Sasa hao muru, ndio wanaishi uko. Ah, okay. Sasa ndio wanaitwa kambi. Camp of the Muru. Hey, ah, okay. Muru. So Muru ni kabila ya... Wanu Kwa nubi, tu sinana tukwa Luru, Muru, Lendu, Luguar, Mkwengi. We finally got it. So Nubian has so many uh, different uh, subclans. And so Muru is one of the subclans. This is what I've been asking for the whole time. <laughs> so the Muru were living somewhere around here. Mm. And that is how this village became... Kambi Muru, which is a camp of the moon. Mm -hmm. We finally got it, ladies and gentlemen. So, we yeah. grow up a Kambi Muru. Mm -hmm. Ni memories gani up a Kambi Muru. Kambi Muru ni Mzuri. Mm -hmm. Tuliko tunaka Mzuri sana. Mm -hmm. Mahali. Tukitoka hapa. Tunaenda na tunapata nyumba ingine hapo. Mm -hmm. Tunaenda na tunapata ingine. Mm -hmm. Hata mjomba wangu alikuwa na kapo katwekera yeah. Lakini haitu ikatwekera ito Gatwekera Gatwekera Nasikia gatwekera yeah. Iyo jina walikuja kuaribu Kwa sababu wale walikuja Hawajui kuita Kwa yeah. naitua katwekera Lakini inaitu gatwekera Kwa sababu ya gatwekera Ni wakikui walikuwa maishi ah. Wakikui moja hili tatu ine hili So gatwekera is a swipe Gatwekera is a kikui name, gatwekera is a kikui name. Ah, okay. Mm. Sasa hiyo gatwekera, hapo ni kwa wa kikui. Wa kikui ni walikuwa naishi hapo. Kina nani? Kina watu wakina nyanyangu. Sajua, ah. nyanyangu, ubabu yangu, ameawa nyanyangu mkikui. Nyanya, ah, okay. Nyanyangu, nya, abiba, nyokavi. Ah, that is name. Mke wa mze. Wele seme, Wele seme. wa pili. Alikuwa naitua abiba. So Mzewe Leseme, who is the founder of this area, um, intermarried a Kikuyu woman who was from the other village that we had talked about and called Katwekera. So apparently it is not Katwekera, it is Gatwekera. With a G, not with a K. Hey, <laughs> so what she's saying, her memories of her growing up here in Kambi Muru is they never used to be, it never used to be this crowded. People came and inhabited and that's because they would move from their Boma here. Boma is like a home for the new world. And they would walk a distance to another Boma another distance to another boma like i told you one of the things that kenyans are really good at is changing things when <laughs> when they get into something they change it completely and you would think like who would think katwekera was gatwekera 
and they change it into katwekera sasa mami my last question yenye ningependa kuuliza we know nubians were the first settlers here in kibera uh, you have a memory of walking a distance to the other villages kibera ilianza ku change dini when did kibera start changing to what it is today kibera ime change kama nishapo mkubwa mmm eh ndio manyumba ikaanza kuja mmm nadhani hiyo kibera ime change Seventy <laughs> piga walikompana sana hapa mm -hmm. kwa sababu chief analete mtu hakishalete mtu analete mtu ana, anaanza kumpimia mm -hmm. na nielewa ni boma yetu lakini hatuna uwezo ni boma ya kina mama yangu by that time nilikuwa nimeshakuwa mkubwa nimeshaenda ka secondary mm -hmm. najua sasa mtu anakuja tu chief anakuja kina mama akigombana watagombana kama nani watagombana na crown ni kwao lakini hawawezi. Mm. Wanaelewa pali yetu kwa nini kwa nini washachukua futi 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 wameshapimia mtu. Wakiana ku, miti imekuja. Miti kukuja nyumba ikaanza kuja inaanza kujengwa. Huku kwa huku kwa babu yangu ilikuwa imetoka kutoka hapa. Imeenda hivi ikapita katwekera. Mm. Unaona Catholic Church ile iko huko Langata. Yes. Ile bado inajengwa hiyo Catholic Church kubwa. Hiyo yes. yote ni yawele sema. Saint Michael. Saint Michael kuanzia hapa hivi kwenda paka St Michael hiyo wow. ni awelesema ya Abdul Faraj mm. lakini sasa tuko na nini tumebaki tu na hapa hatuwezi ongea utaongea na serikali this is interesting yeah? so then it takes us to the story na of uma. operation uh, by the uh, government and uh, the official the local authority so i was asking when did kibera change because she grew up and she witnessed the change of kibera and uh, what she's explaining to me is kibera started changing in the 80s when there was a corrupt chief that was brought into this area and now people are bribing him and he would come and measure in the sembes area for other <laughs> so the ones that were there were the daughters and the sons, sons. So then um, they did not really have the power to fight the authority. So they would just come, invade, and take over, bring in new people. And that's how Kibera uh, started being um, overpopulated and crowded and, you know, squeezed. My last question as we close. What are some of the good things that you've seen growing up in Kibera? memories of any good thing vitu gani vizuri memory gani nzuri uko nazo hapa kibera hakuna no good memory uh -huh. hakuna memory nzuri kibera kwa sababu sisi wa nubi yes the wenye kibera tunalia hatujaona right yetu hatujapewa haki yetu haki yetu inazidi kudidimia unasikia mm -hmm. Watu wamekuja wamejikaribisha kibira. Mm. Lakini sasa wao ndio wamekuwa the owners. Mm. Unasikia? Sasa sisi hata wanubi tukiongea wanatuona sisi sio kitu. Mm. Na imagine sisi ndio wenye hapa. Kina mzee alisema walikuwa hapa wakile wakifuga vitu zao mifugo zao. Mafisi inakuja inakula. Asubuhi wanapata ngombe imeshavutwa na fisi. Wao ndio wamefanya paka mafisi na masimba na manini imetoka hapa. Hapa ilikuwa tu wanyama wako. Hata wakilala usiku wanasikia fisi. Mama yangu amesema walikuwa analala hivi fisi inatembea. Eh? Lakini sasa hakuna fisi wametunyang'anya kila kitu. Imagine sasa sisi kama wajukuu na vitukuza wemeseme. Hatuna mahali ile tunaka. Mimi na watoto wangu tunalala kwa hiyo mwi. Kwa sababu mali yote sasa kama kama huyu mzee alikuwa kwa na hectares, not acre, ni hectares mm. ya mahali na saizi hatuna hata 50 by 100 ile tutasema yetu 
Tunaona? Mm. Hiyo inauma. Hata kama ni wewe, hata kama ni serikali, hata kama ni nani inauma. Mm. Kwa sababu uyadhaona lakini sasa hizi tuna beg. So interesting. So mzee wele seme uh, had hectares, not acres, hectares of land. And now the granddaughter doesn't even have a 50 by 100 for herself. People came and invaded and you know, here they, it used to be a village and they used to have cows. When she was growing up, they used to have cows, animals that they were, remember they came here as nomads and pastor, pastoralists. And so now I'm walking around their boma and I cannot even see a chicken. Why? Because people have lived around them. There are so many people around them that came here and took over and even on the other side you see the area has been in, inhabited by so many people some of them i'm sure she doesn't even know about them and so i'm wondering is this the reason and could this be one of the contributory factors to the violence in kibera during elections unafikiri I wadui ambayo iko kwa kibira uh, um, wakati wa elections Unafikiri ni juu ya ile machungu ambayo kila mtu wako nae Unawana ni kuambie Sisi kabila yetu wanubi tunapenda watu Na kabila yetu wanubi hatuchokozi right. Lakini wenye wamekuja kwetu Ndiyo sasa wamekuja kutugeuka mm wanatuchukia kwa sababu ya haki yetu. Unaona? Mtu amekuja amewapata, amekuja kukaa, anaona yeye ndiye the owner of that place. Mm. Ukianza kumwambia kitu, hakuoni kitu. Unaona? Hiyo mm. inauma, inatuuma sana. To an extent, wanakuja, wanatupiga, wanatuua. Eh? Yeah? Kwetu. Mm tutaita kwetu kwa sababu ni kwetu tutaita kwetu kwa sababu ni kwetu saizi tukikufa tunaziko hapa hakuna mm. siku tumewekwa kwa keria tunapelekwa mahali mm. tunaziko hapa karanja babu yangu huyo mzee wele seme na kuambia kwa hapa karanja mm. tunajua muslim sana ntri yes, kwa hapo yes. mzee wele seme ya kwa hapo bibi yake ya biba bibi bakari ya kwa hapo bibi yake zena ya kwa hapo mm. hawa watu watu wameziko hapo mama angu wa kwa hapo baba angu wamepelekwa hapo Mi nikikufa hapa kibira nitapelekwa hapa. Okay. Lakini nikikufa pale pengine nitazikwa huko kwa sababu sisi waislamu hatu transport body. Mm. Unaona? Lakini sasa kwa nini wenye wako na kwao hata saizi akikufa anapelekwa wanasema nampeleka kwa shamba ya baba yake ndo anaenda kuzikwa. Mm. Unanisikia? Mm. Na sisi hatuna shamba ya baba yetu, shamba ya babu yetu ndio hii. Wameja, wametufinya paka hata tuweze kupinduka lakini sasa hatuna sauti lakini wao sasa ndio wako na sauti wanataka kutupush kabisa kututoa tafadhali na waomba tupewe haki yetu na tupewa pale petu mm. nasikia kwa sababu kila mtu wako na kwao saizi walisema watatupatia 400 sijui what 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 mimi unajua mimi sijui hiyo maneno imeenda huko imeenda huko imeenda huko from actors sasa wanatuambia 288 what is 288 kwa hectares hata yawele seme siyo 288 mm. hmm? mm. hata yawele seme si 288 well, yawele seme ni hectares mm. lakini saizi 288 ndo wanapatia nuanubi mzima hapana hiyo sasa wanataka kutuwa umiza na wanatu umiza mm. unawana kwa wanubi kenyata hospital ya wanubi keren ya wanubi hii ni ni hii wanaita ya ya center huko mm. yote ni ya wanubi mm. ni kuambia hiyo mali yote imagine wanubi walikuwa kutoka kere nili hapa hili yote ni ya wanubi lakini saizi hata wanubi waoni hata ndururu tunakufa maskini lakini unajua sisi wanubi tunasema tumewachia mwenyezi mungu mwenyezi mungu ndo watatulipia mm. eh yeah. so one of the things i'm gonna just say it in a nutshell um she said nubians are people with love for people and so i think in extending their love for people and allowing people to come to the area that they had inhabited the area that they know as home uh people have taken advantage and so now a lot of people have really 
come in. And so I remember there was a debate about uh, giving the Nubians title deeds. Uh, they've taken it around and so what she's explaining to me is that it's been reduced to something that is not car uh, even comparable to what Mzel Weleseme had. And so for her, Mzel Weleseme is buried here. The body is buried in Kibera, there's a cemetery. The wives are buried in Kibera. She's saying if she dies, she'll be buried here. And so for the people from Western Kenya, or every other tribe that is living in Kibera, when they die, none of them is buried here in Kibera. That's right. That explained to you that the Nubians are the inhabitants of Kibera. Let us know in the comment section what you think as we close. Asante sana, Mami. We appreciate you for your time and for that history. Uno kwa get mm. akiingia kwake. Mm. So unaona? So unaona bado tumetolewa huku tukapushiwa huku. Bado tuna <laughs> say seventh village in village in Kebera. Yeah. And uh, we are here with um, this youngster who grew up born was brought up here in Kambi Muru. You want to tell our viewers your name? I'm Kevin Jikoni, born in Kambi Muru and raised up in Kambi Muru. So this guy is born and uh, Kevin is born and brought up in Kambi. It has provided, it has provided, it has provided uh, residence for people, uh, okay. security, uh, no theft cases. Uh, yeah. Also, Kambi Muru is doesn't have cases of uh, theft or very crime. Eh? Yeah, it doesn't have. Doesn't have. Uh, very minimal. Ah, uh, okay. What would you say is the main activity here in the village of Kambimo? We have so many different activities that we want. We have those washing clothes for others. Mm. We have to, we have washing clothes. We have those who go to fetch water mm. so that they can mama. Exactly. Tell us how it was growing up in Kambimo. Growing up in Kambimo, actually. Mm. Actually, it's a good place. Mm -hmm. It's only that few challenges here and there because it's ghetto. Mm -hmm. So you know the life of ghetto that is maybe gay, gay, getting money, going to school was a little bit challenge. Those are the challenges we, again, we, we, we went through. Mm -hmm. Getting school fees. Yeah. Mm -hmm. General experiences. Maybe from childhood, what memories you have. You know, I've be... never regretted mm -hmm. to live in Kambi. Generally, it's just a good place that I can describe it. Uh, okay. uh, do you see yourself living in Kambu Nuhu through old age? I don't know. What is the size of Kambi Nuhu, if you know? It's, you know it's the smallest village in yeah, Kibera? It's, it's, yeah, it's the smallest, but I don't know. Actually. What's the major population here in Kambi Nuhu? The major population actually there are ladies. Uh, ladies. Oh, women are the biggest population. Yeah, and youth. Uh, women and youth. Yeah, yeah. But then, uh, from which part of the country or which tribe? <laughs> Most of them are with oh, the biggest tribe. The biggest tribe, it's actually, like, it's like Luz and Luyas. Like Luz and Luyas? Yeah, they are ah. Ah. Yeah, yeah. ah, okay. So what do you do for a living? I don't have the main, the main, the one that comes. I call myself as like any any hustle that comes that can make me earn money and go for it. Okay, and what is your hope with the hustle trend? One one day I wish to employ my trade to be self-employed. Okay. Yeah. And what are you looking into? For self-employment. Oh, self-employment. Mm -hmm. I want one day to have my own company that will uh, install in gypsum into people's houses. Ah, so interior design. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. 
wish you all the best. Yeah. And uh, so you you studied in you studied interior uh, design. No, I've not studied. Ah, okay. Usually go just as a helper. Ah, okay. Yeah. Oh, so that's how you learn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is mostly how we learn how to do some of the. Um, in Kenya, you have to be a jack of all trades to survive, and so that's what I'm getting from Kevin as well. Peter Truman. Yeah. You know, Kevin is saying a lot of the population here are Lewis and, and Lurias, but I see a lot of Nubians. Yeah, these are Nubians, yes, it's true, but we overtake them, we surpass them. Uh, when now. you say we, we as Lewis and Lurias, ah, we are the majority. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's really interesting. So, I'm hanging out with Kevin. Um, he's from this village, and so he was born and brought up here, so getting insight from him about this village like i said this is the smallest village in in um, kibera like you said very minimal crime um not much drama it's also as calm as mashimon but uh, maybe a little bit more calm right yeah yeah um i'm not really sure about this but we are still exploring uh understanding the villages of it's unsafe these kids are from school and they're very young and they're alone so, tell me how unsafe Kibera is by proving to me through these videos and tell me which part of, world, of the world is completely safe and I'll believe that Kibera is unsafe, different from the world.